Um, Brad, yeah, do we have tasters? How hungry are you? Hello and welcome, I'm Sean and I'm Axel and we're here today at the Fear Factory which is our latest in our Scare Maze tour it's a two maze extravaganza that's right so we're here, there's two mazes one of them's dark, one of them's Hushnet yep. and the other one is Brown Bread it is located in an old factory in the middle of Darwin apparently it used to be a bakery so clearly one of the mazes is um, themed towards that it's got a bar, it's got um, an axe thrower, and it's got the two scare mazes, all for the low, low price of £15. If you live in the Bolton area, could be worth a trip. But we're about to go in, experience it, and let you know how we feel. We are at opening night because it has been pushed back by a week. We are filming this intro outside and it is absolutely throwing, throwing it, it down, down right now. <laughs> so let's get inside, let's get the vlog started, and please, Get me scared. Come on, let's go. Okay, so we are here and we are in the event. We've been here for an hour and a half. So, so we'll give you a bit of a heads up. The first time we came here was a week ago to the day. Uh, we made the drive down all the way to Darwin and we came to the place, or what we thought was the place, and we could not find where we entered. So we decided to give them a call and they told us that unfortunately due to circumstances out of their control, the fire brigade man had been in um, and they had to do some minor adjustments to make the fire, the, marshal. The fire marshal had been in and they had to do some minor adjustments to make the event safe for people which of course is completely fine because they offered to reschedule our tickets and give us a free drinks voucher for the next time that we are here glad they accept we understand that events experience these issues productions experience these issues and some things are bound to happen so a week later it is now the 7th of october and we are here on opening night we arrived at 7 p.m yeah. we came in we got our free drink rushed here rushed here yeah we rushed here we got our free drink we had our free drink we seen that the mazes weren't letting people in yet, so what we decided to do was go away, have some food, and come back. It is now 8.30 p.m. We've come up. There is a few more people in the bar, as you can see. There's about 30 people max in this place right now. That being said, we said, well, where do we go to the mazes? And? Not open yet. Not open yet. <laughs> and the thing is, yeah, I will put aside that it's a second year event, they have issues, and that's completely fine. And I'm sure the mazes will be great. I'm sure the mazes will be great. They've had an extra week to prepare, at least. But with that being said, it is a week overdue. The event has been letting people in for an hour and a half, and I'm still not allowed to enter a maze. I haven't had a drink anymore. I'm driving, I can't. Come on. Yeah, but. Have a warm cocktail with some young guys in I'm going to have another drink. Is this, is this just a way for them to earn money? Stop. Stop. We don't want to be negative. We're not negative people. Right? No, no. Very positive. No, constructive criticism. Okay. 100%. Right, but we're not negative. We're like, we just have opinions on things. You know what I mean? It's going bad. We like to see. Saying how it is And I am all for giving this place all the chances it deserves. It's a nice venue, really nice venue. We've oh, yeah. got an axe bar when you come in, that's pretty cool. Um, you know, the drinks are pretty well themed, pretty fun. The like mazes have good open themes. Well, open them. Well, we hope they do. Well, we've read about them. We've read about them, we could go in there, just be two guys holding some, like, you know, matchsticks up, I don't know. How many actors? do they have in the mazes? 
because right now we've been waiting for two hours and people are getting very impatient. So if I was, you know, one of the managers or leaders of this event, 100% I'll be sending three or four actors out here to interact with the people in this room. Yeah, would you not? 100%. 100%, get some scare actors into this event. You know, entertain us. It's all mad. They said that the mazes are going to open very soon. Um, they said that one of them is 20 minutes long and the other one is about 10 or 15 minutes. So a 20 minute maze, I'm all up for that. That sounds amazing. And again for the other one, 10 or 15 minutes, that's a very good length for a maze. Considering the event tonight was £15 and you get two mazes, well, they expect them to be about five or ten minutes each, but a 20 minute one, I am very, very intrigued. If that is scary, that is going to seem like a nightmare that is never ending. So bring it on. We've now been told to go downstairs. I've just come out of that door. I'm waiting for Sean. I'm going to go into there. Pushnet. Step into Mr. Bloom's haunted house. A house hiding the dark web of debauchery, torture, and blood curdling massacres. Will you become another statistic? Or just another number added to the ever growing index of missing souls? Tread carefully, he's waiting for you. Local rumours are circling that Mr. Blue is luring people into his haunted house to feed his sick website. A site hidden deep in the digital realms of the dark web. A site where people can pay to get their fix streamed live. A site where anything goes. A site where silence is golden. So just a quick review on the first maze, which was Hush Net. The story was that, uh, what did you get from the story? You're going into this, it's like internet, dark net. You go through, there's people in more black morph outfits that jump out at you. Um, that was really cool actually, because what they did was they would hide in specific places and like they'd be able to go between walls because there'd be like uh, like panels that you mm. could push through and they'd pop up and they'd scare you more than once. That was really, this is what I mean, there was really good ideas in there that just needed to be a bit more, not, not that the event wasn't organised well, but the actual in the mazes just needs to be a bit more like they need to know what they're doing a bit more because there's an opportunity to scare you every 10 seconds in that place and they have the actors, they have the staff and they've got the right set for it. I love the fact that in that maze, it's a maze where you can like literally, you can push doors and you can open things and you can walk through them and you sort of have to find your way. Yeah, you could be walking around yeah. in a circle in that maze 10 times and feel like you're in a different part because the jumps could come from different yeah. areas. And they 100% should have played on that. Like 100%. Walked you in a circle like three times. Yeah. So you go that direction. After that, you go into an area where there's some TVs and screens. Yeah. And there's a guy there saying, was there something on the screen that you, you, know, you shouldn't have saw? I feel like that is when you meet the protagonist of the story and that he is the controller of this website on the dark yeah. web that you are journeying through. Yeah. And there's something on the screen that you shouldn't have saw, which may have been the bit that we just walked through. Um, and then he says, right, you can't stay here, you need to go. After that, they just took us through like some like, it was like a horror thing. Like, I think we were in the dark net, I guess. And like there was, you know, I'm not too hung up on the story song as there's good scares. And there were some decent scares in that second bit. The guy with the chainsaw, the murderer with the pig mask. Like that wasn't, like I wasn't 
like jump scared i was like all right let's get out of here it's like being in a horror film i think there was a lot of op missed opportunities the actors did great for what they had um the story was a good platform yeah. but it definitely could have done with more yeah uh and it was it was over too soon yeah the actors were great um the i thought the set was actually really good yeah the set was really good i just think like, you know, those are two really strong positives, a really good starting point. And this is their opening weekend, so they have got time to rehearse it and get it better and better and better. So it probably will be much better come, come Halloween time. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. It is only opening night. But, yeah, the only criticism I have of that first maze is it could it, it easily could have been dragged out a bit more. They, I don't want to say they rushed you through it. I felt like we... But but I, I, I think we could have been teased in there a bit more. We could have been shown oh, yeah. around in circles we could yeah. have been it, it just you know i like the fact that i wasn't sure whether or not i was in the right right place sometimes True. but that's when they need to like just scare you you True. know what i mean and that was hush Net. yeah on to brown bread We're currently waiting to go into the second maze known as Brown Bread. It's advertised as just a normal tour of the bread, the bread factory. So let's see the bread factory. <laughs> Hello. Hello, you ready for your tour of the bakery? Yeah. Fantastic. Um, Brad, yeah, do we have tasters? How hungry are you? Come on in, come on in. Let's go, let's go. Come on. Okay, if you'd like to stand there, that would be absolutely wonderful. Brown Bread. Industry leading bakers, Brown Bread Co., reluctantly open their doors again to the public. Take a full tour of the town's most notorious secretive bakehouse. What lies behind those bolted doors? And why does the chimney smoke turn pitch black after midnight? The burning smell that fills the air is putrid. What are they hiding? Dare to find out. Hello, and we are going to now review Brown Bread, which is the second maze that we went on tonight. I don't know if that's the first or the second maze, but that's the order we went in, so that's maze number two for us. And um, Brown Bread was actually um, a very unique experience in the sense that I've not been in many scare mazes where they actually put a bag over your head for the entire thing and use it as a chance to... Um, I assume there may have been two... There may have been a few more actors in there, but I'm assuming that it was just the two actors that were basically scaring us four who were in there. Yes. And it was really, really well done because it was creepy. You could sort of see through the mask a little bit. You could mm -hmm. sort of see through the bag, but like you could only see outlines and then they'd move and you wouldn't know where they were. So that sort of added to the terror. Um, it was more scary than the first maze. Mm -hmm. Again, it could have been scarier. There could have been more, but overall it was a really strong maze and i can imagine as it gets closer to halloween it's probably going to become an even stronger maze you go into the maze and you're greeted by a woman who says you know my grandma works here my mum works here my brother works here my cousin works here this is our bakery and we're going to give you a tour around the bakery but you cannot be giving away any of our secrets. So what you have to do is put this bag over your head yeah. and all you will do is smell and hear the sights and sounds of our fabulous bakery. So you put this bag on your head and I think that is fantastic because especially if you haven't got a lot of set or uh, you know other things going on, then I think that it is great to really um, reduce your senses, really play on that, taking the sensor, senses away. Um, and you know, when you when you can't see clearly what is happening around you, it puts your your sensory levels up a little bit yeah, and it heightens your fear. 
Yeah, so I think depraving you of one of your senses is great. 100%. Um, and I think that that maze was the, the better one of the two because of that fact, to be honest. And I'm not really keen on putting a bag over my head a lot of the time. Yeah. Going through the maze was great because when you've got the bag on your head, the floor in certain sections is squishy. Um, so, you know, you've, I'm a walking on the bread, there's wet I'm a walking patches. on, uh, you know, dead bodies. Yeah. Then there's feels wet like that, patches, yeah. they, they touch your hands. It feels like they're licking your hands at one point. Mm. I didn't know what was going on there. Wiping your nose on it. Which is great because it's a sense of mystery. Yeah. Yeah. And it is freaky. Like, you do laugh, like, but it is, it is freaky. Like, you're like, what is going on? Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? And then you get to about the halfway point and she gets you out of there and she rips the bag off your head. Well, it's, it's towards the end. Mm. She rips the bag off your head and says, right, that's it. You know, get I'm done with you. One of you is a traitor and one of you has seen the secret. You need to get out. This is what we do with people that have seen the secret. You go into the oven. Yeah. And that bit was my favourite bit of the whole event because you had to climb into a box. It wasn't on the floor. It wasn't up high, but you had to step into it, yeah? And crawl. Into a box. And once you stepped into it, there's a small crawl space that you're, like, on your feet, but still making your way through, like an army crawl through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and that was great because, again, it's playing on that claustrophobia. Yeah. Just as they did with a bag on your head, it's playing on that claustrophobia. It's, it's, it, it's bringing it in so tight. You're struggling to move. You don't normally move like that on a day-to-day -day basis. And you're thinking, what the hell is happening? What am I going into? What is this oven? But then that's the exit. Yeah, <laughs> nothing happens after. And that is where my problem comes. In that, I enter the oven for the punishment of finding their secret. But at the end of that oven is the exit to the maze. Yeah. And for me, personally, once I've gone into the oven, even if it's one big scare at the end, yeah. that is what it should be, the finale. Yeah. The finale moment. I don't know if it's going to be one big scare or if it should be a little bit more of a maze, but there definitely should be something at the end of going into the oven. No. Otherwise, what's the point of going into the oven? Where's the payoff? 100%. I just feel underwhelmed because... I was sitting in there for two hours and they were saying that, you know, they've not set up. I don't feel what they had to set up because I had a bag on the whole, on the head the whole yeah, time. Yeah, this is, that's, that's true. Um, Unless the actor was late, yeah? <laughs> hire another actor. <laughs> if people are going to be waiting around and you're going to have a drinks area, remember this is a scare event. Yeah. Yeah? While people are waiting in the, in the area, what are they building towards... They're psyching themselves up. They're too scared to go into the scary maze, yeah? So what you've got to do is have someone, one person from Hushnet and one person that represents brown bread, at least, going around giving hints, clues about their maze. Yeah. Scaring you, freaking you out, psyching you out. 100%. That's what you want, yeah? And I feel like that, even that, it would add a bit more to the event. Yeah. It was a really good maze. It was very, very different to what other scare mazes offer. Okay, so we have just finished our night in Fear Factory, both of the scare mazes. They said that one of them was going to be 20 minutes and the other one was 15. Although one of them was like One 10. of them was about 10, 11, 12 minutes maybe. And the other one was about 5. I thought it was quite good for what it was. It, was, it wasn't worth two hour wait. If, it hadn't been, if I just got there and that was it then I would have been happy, but it was just the fact that it took so long to set up. But it is opening night and, mm. you know. It's one of them things where I think that they had really good ideas in there. Mm. Like, I like the fact that the maze was movable, like you could move the doors and you could open them. But they didn't make it clear that that's what you had to do. So Yeah, it's a bit and music. in a scare maze, you're not used to moving the set or opening no. doors or going ways in which you don't feel like you're supposed to. No. You're not used to doing that, so it's... It's strange because you don't know where you're going. Yeah. I mean, he gave that feedback back to them. I don't want to be a downer on the event because I feel like the actors really, really worked well with what they had. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, the makeup wasn't great. The costumes wasn't great. We've experienced more. That said, the actors did well with what they had. 
I feel like there was a good amount of actors in there, to be honest, for the space that they had. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and um, the posts are really friendly. Mm. So like everyone, was. everyone in there is like super friendly, super accommodating. You know, um, even though it did take a little while, they were like quite honest with how long it was taking. They came round one to one to tell you what was going on and where the mazes were. And uh, I think there was some unique ideas in there. Like you know, they put a bag over your head. You got walked yep. through this scare yep. maze with it a bag. It definitely over played your head. on your senses. Yeah. Uh, on claustrophobia. Yeah. yeah. Um, on the elimination of senses and yeah. you know taking your rights away from you which is all you know the foundations yeah. of a great scare maze yeah. but there's definitely work to be had and we weren't the only ones saying that in there other people was coming to us what did you think about it we didn't think it was that yeah. good and to be honest definitely there is better ones but for what it was was it that bad I no, I just bad. think it was the way that was that bad. Yeah, I think it was like, if you live in Bolton, 100%, or you live in Darwin or wherever we are, definitely come visit it, it's definitely worth a visit. If you live far mm. away, it's not worth I wouldn't travel. travel far no, for it, no. Travel. This is only a quick vlog, we're not really able to film inside the mazes. I did no. try to film a bit, but it's always no. Couldn't uh, reveal the secrets of the bakery. Yeah, it's only a quick vlog. So we'll end it there and we'll be back next week with another scare maze throughout this horrifying October. So from me, Axel, and me, Sean, we'll see you in another video.